there we go. Hello, beautiful people. And uh, so happy you could join us and Courtney Dillon, wonderful medium and healer. And she's got some cool stuff happening on the 11th of November. I don't know if this will get on there in time, but can you tell us a little bit about that before we do our interview with John Muir? So thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, I am offering a free workshop, 1111, which is a really powerful gateway for energies oh, yeah. um, at 10 30 Pacific time. And you can go on my website, um, CourtneyDillon.com and sign up. And we're going to, I'm going to offer channeled messages. Um, Eric will, will show up and we're just going to really um, tune lovely. into ways to support our life. Cause I know there's so many people that are having a hard time right now. So mm-hmm. should be good. Lovely thing to do. And hi, Eric. I love you. He says he loves you, mom. He's, he's dressed like a hiker. He's so good. Oh, he oh, knows I funny. like to hike and John yeah. obviously likes to hike. So Gordy was telling me that she picked up the energy of John Muir and he's very quiet, like a peaceful prophet and that uh, slow talking. So I called him John Demure. <laughs> okay. I, I gave my day job. Anyway, he was born April 21st, my birthday, almost the same year, 1838 kidding he died december 24th 1914 also known as john of the mountains and father of the national park he was scottish born american naturalist author environmental philosopher botanist zoologist glaciologist and er early advocate for the preservation of the wilderness in the united states now i have 27 questions that were uh, collected from our wonderful community. They always ask such great questions. So shall we begin? We can begin. So let me tell you, he is stepping forward. Eric's on his left um, and he's on the right side and he has a very peaceful, calm energy. Um, He has a lot to say about this time period that we're living in. So this should be interesting. Um, He does say, he says, um, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for having you're me. Welcome. Okay. All right. Also, I wanted to tell everybody, I almost forgot. Um, I'm going to start doing TikTok live. So if you want to mm. be notified of those, and it could be a total disaster. I don't know. I've never done it before. But anyway, uh, be sure you follow me. Otherwise, you won't get the notification. Okay. So I will I- join TikTok, Elisa. I don't think I'm even on it. Okay. I'll join. And then, yeah. walk in, you can co-host. You can say, hey, I'll jump in and talk about this. Okay. Um, all right. Now here are the questions. Okay. Mr. Muir, was your soul contract? What was your soul contract in this lifetime? Hmm. He says my soul contract, as you refer to it, was to suggest to others the oneness of all things. I was here to teach others and to learn and to teach others to listen to their own inner world, therein listening to the natural world around them. I was here to teach others that those two worlds are one and the same. Beautiful. All right, in 1867, when you temporarily went blind, I didn't know that, and regained eyesight, was was this the reason you became passionate about nature? What happened too? I mean, what's going on there? He says he refers to it as a spiritual blindness, hmm. for in that blindness I was able to see the connectedness of all things. I began to understand the importance of communion with nature. Although I understood this importance from a very young age. It was through this experience of blindness that I came into closer resonance with myself. Hmm. It's like it was a he's describing it as a bit of Eric says, don't itch your nose. I that happens okay. when you channel. Um oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Eric. Um <clears throat> he's describing this blindness as a, a sort of a spiritual awakening that he experienced in order to 
understand the profound connection and the importance of stewardship that humans hold with the natural world. Okay. Probably had amaurosis, uh, I thought so, fugax, which is a temporary blindness. But usually it's just in one eye, so I'm not really sure. Um, it looks like he's showing me it was both. Okay. Yeah. I'll look it up later. It's the doctor in me. I need to know. Did you actually tie yourself to trees during a windstorm to know how it felt for the trees' point of view? He just smiles. <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> he says, I did many things that humans would consider odd in the time period. Yeah. I am an odd fellow. <laughs> but a storyteller and a good man. And I taught others to behave the same way. I did this to under to teach others the importance of stewardship with the land, to teach others that they are not apart from the land, but they are connected and one in the same. And he's smiling because he, yes, he did do this. Okay, just, cool. Yeah. I think I would have done the same thing. I just love nature. It's my thing, man. I My dream would be to just live in a little log cabin and live off the land by a little pond, a lake or whatever. And, and I know that's kind of the first environment you created for yourself eric after you passed over mm -hmm. before you shed the rest of your humanness so you and i are kind of alike then all right since you were called the father of national parks did you ever see something in the forest that you never told anyone about because there was no ex explanation for it i have in truth seen many many spirits in the forest oh many beings who commune with the plants, the spirits of the rocks, the men who gather around the trees. I am a seer and I could see these things, although I kept them to myself and did not share them with anyone. You too, he's speaking to you, Elisa, have the ability to see these things. Oh. You can quiet your mind and learn to see the beings who support all of earth and all of God's creation. Like the elementals, fairies, gnomes, things like that. There are a multitude of beings who surround us and surround the natural world. They are ancient beings of the rocks who have gathered around the rocks and supported and protected the rocks for many thousands of years. There are guardians of the mountains there are spirits who protect the trees. There are guardians of the flowers and the yellow and the rock and the crystals. I can see most of these beings. And when my mind is quiet and in solitude, I can see many of them, commune with them and speak with them. You too will be able to share this ability if you so choose. You know, this is hard in Houston to find maybe a memorial park. There's that, but do you do you not, he, said, he says do you not have blades of grass under your feet as you walk oh well that's true all right i would even say that there are beings who support these blades of grass mm -hmm. as there as there are different species there are elemental beings who support support each and every species that resides on the planet it is difficult to imagine that many humans do not understand the importance of preserving the species, mm -hmm. the various species of plants, who do not take heed of the warnings at hand, for it is of great importance that you preserve the natural world. And this is the message I have come forth to share with you today. I'm so glad. You know, there is a, a, an old film, I think it's from the 70s, called The Secret Life of Plants. And it starts out with um, a Stevie Wonder song. But it's quite an amazing documentary because, for example, they had this uh, these plants, then they were hooked to some sort of almost like an EKG kind of machine to measure their energy. And with these plants watching, witnessing, they had a variety of scientists in white coats uh, they had, well, they had one that came in and tore up one of the plants, <laughs> ripped it to shreds, and their electrical 
impulses just went nuts. So then after things calmed down, one by one, different scientists would come into the room. And only in, when the murderer came in did that same crazy electrical impulse come in. So they, I, I believe they do have feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you don't have to respond to that. But he's, he's, he's saying something. He says, plants like us have the ability to communicate and understand how we feel. We are in direct communication with the plants and the trees at all times. It is your job to witness them and speak to them as I did. Yeah. You can even see me by a tree one day if you ask. Okay. I will laugh. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you guys, um, there are, we did a, 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 a series of things uh, talking about with Eric elementals we talked about surprise and all this kind of stuff and also how you can communicate with them etc so you might want to go back and just look up elementals or um i don't know i, I can't remember legends and myths and well, you can look it up with a tag word um also eric i remember when you were talking about you know how people vegetarians are just horrified that people eat meat but then you said that the soul of an asparagus, maybe you used another vegetable, is just as valued as the soul of a cow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that the main thing is to raise animal or plant with respect and love. And when they do make their sacrifice to feed, to nourish us, be, you know, first of all, sacrifice them humanely, but also be thankful be thankful for whether it's a plant or an animal do you still hold to that eric and john can you tell me if, what do you think about that uh eric does hold to that same idea um eric says to me that he says hi mom <laughs> hi i love you i don't know if i said that already or not you did you did okay um he says it will be shocking for people to know this but the most important thing as humans that we can do is to honor what we are eating. Yeah. It is as much of a benefit to us and our human body as it is to that which we are eating, he's saying. So he agrees. Okay. He says, he's showing me like, um, uh, you know, uh, what is it? A drive through and how a lot of people, and he's not saying this as a put down, but he's yeah. saying how a lot of people were going through drive throughs and just getting our food and eating it really fast. And we're not thinking about any of the oh. um, process. So he's yeah. saying just, even if you have to do that and you're short on time, because sometimes we find ourselves in these situations, just take a moment and thank the food that will change the vibration of the food. And probably will help you health wise. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, good. Have you but ever? He said it better to avoid drive-throughs, but you know, I you know. Have to. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen any Bigfoots, or are they called Big Feet? No, I'm kidding. Uh, have you seen Bigfoot? Are you at John? Are you asking John? Okay. Oh, I know you hung out with him, Eric. I mean, Eric's like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Eric's like, yeah, yes, mom. Well, um, I have seen many wild creatures creatures of fairy tales mm. i do not believe i have seen bigfoot as such but the creatures i see and continue and have seen in the forest are of rare sight oh are they in, like interdimensional beings or just normal that normal to our earthly plane these beings i would call them normal to the earthly plane though many most rather cannot detect them with their eyesight mm. it is of importance and uh, of great importance to become quieter quieter in the mind and mm. to learn to see with the heart and you will begin to detect these beings you may not at first see them with physical sight but begin to detect their presence if you ask them to show themselves they may leave clues for you along the path if you ask also as they are often, he's showing me um, 
what are they the like the nodes he says well, yeah right um, um they are often um sprightly and sly oh, so okay. they they'll lead the, and they, they will do like tricks oh yeah that's, that's funny so yeah i mean bigfoot uh, is so hard to find because they're interdimensional and so they can slip out of this dimension to their other dimension so but do you believe there's you do believe in the presence of bigfoot i mean maybe you've seen them now on the other side now that you're on the i other believe side. i believe he's not speaking of bigfoot necessarily but he says i believe that there is much more than what can be detected by the human eye yeah i think well, it is yes okay yeah it is of necessity at this point, not just importance, to begin to think and listen with your deeper awareness, to become quiet, to become still and know the connection of all things. For if you do not, humans are on a very destructive path, and I find myself dismayed at the direction that many humans are headed. It is not just important but it is necessary at this time to become quiet yeah. and to become still it yeah. is the way in which you will begin to hear and only through it is the way in which you will begin to see and only through this type of hearing and sight you will experience and understand yourself to be connected to all things it is through this awareness that I suggest to you that you put down the devices, as you call them, yes. place them in a drawer, go outside in, on the land, yeah. spend time communing with that, with that which you are. Disregard the traps of consumerism it is important to understand that this consumerism, in which I shall call it, is killing many of you, or it is a trap that will not make you happy or content. It is important to live a simple life. Yeah. To live a simple life and spend your time with your feet upon the lands to walk and to commune with the waters, and to hear the rustling of the trees, to learn once again to return to the old ways. I spoke of this and I lived like this. We do not have very much time. It is the time right now is at hand. Yeah. Or if you continue to become absorbed with this culture of disregard for the natural world, the world will be destroyed. And I sit here in disgust and dismay at that which is happening. Yeah. It is important that each person listening today hear this message and do what they can, do what he can and do what she can, even in small ways. I also suggest that you spend time with your children because the children of the world now are the new children yeah. and they will assist you in remembering the importance of the natural world. These children are highly evolved and I see them coming now to deliver messages and healing to the world as it is so needed at this time. I hope you can hear my message today. I am not trying to be in dire straits or without a sense of humor, you understand, but I am trying to convey the importance of the message of which I speak. Yeah, I'm getting it loud and clear. Unfortunately, the children of today are the ones that are most into their devices. So it's the parents' mission to disconnect them from that so they can be our teachers. I do not say, I would even encourage you to say responsibility. Yeah, 
It is your responsibility to reconnect with the natural world and to give children an outlet, which they so deserve and so need. This is childhood. Yeah. Those children who are given devices at such a young age are robbed of the very imagination that creates a beautiful childhood. Yeah, I agree. Does, uh, do you see humanity's attitude toward Gaia and all its essence the same as decades ago, now, and in the future, so past, present, and future? And are the recent catastrophic weather events like Hawaii fires, Mother Nature, or more... So the theories that are being stated, oh, I don't, I don't understand that last part. But anyway, so how have you seen it from the past, present, and, and what do you see in the future? Humanity's attitude toward Gaia in all of her essence. By and large, I see most of humanity absorbed in their own narcissism. By and large, I see most of hum humanity disregard the natural world and the importance of the natural world. Whether this is different from the past, I cannot say. I do understand that there is a glimmer of hope as there is much change happening upon the planet and suffering does necessitate change, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. But what I say is, is there enough change? No. Is the change rapid enough? No. It is through the grips of technology that people have lost their way. Yeah. It is important that people understand that this technology that you allow to control you is keeping you dis disconnected from your very soul. Please put it down. Return to the land, bring your children, get quiet, eat family meals together. That's what we always go the camping. Way forward. Me, my kids and I went camping all the time. And we also had a deal where the Men's Use Charity, we would pass out blankets and, and gloves and stuff to the homeless around Christmas time. We probably should do it more than just that. But we also would um, go to the, go out in nature and put edibles all over a tree for the birds and insects and animals to eat. So I've tried my best to raise them uh, that way, but it, I probably could have done better. Um, now, you know, there's uh, th there's this climate change. How much is it uh, the, um, the, the shape of the orbit, the tilt of the, or the tilt of the axis and things of that nature that we can't do anything about versus man-made? What's the percentages of each? I'm not able to give you a definitive percentage of each. Okay. As I am a scientist and I believe in exact numbers. Yeah, okay. But I will say this. There is an element of the change that is happening upon the planet that is, quote, out of human control. But I would like to suggest that there is an even greater percentage that is by and large created by waste and destruction and disregard on the human level. And if humans were to change their behaviors quickly, that things would begin to improve upon the planet. Yeah. It is simple. If you poison your soil, you will be poisoned. If you poison your water, you will be poisoned. It is through the lack of understanding that I am baffled that humans do not wake up and regard the soil as the single most important thing around them, that they do not understand the necessity to eat pure and clear and clean food for this is their god-given right i am suggesting that you begin to understand the importance of this okay for the land is you yeah 
Okay, poaching and deforestation is wiping out the natural habitats of wild animals and their numbers. What does the future look like for endangered animals like chimpanzee, white rhinos, leopards, etc.? Gorillas, for that matter. Now, are we making I am, changes? I am. Unfortunately, the future looks bleak for some species of animals. Some animals will not survive this change. Others will survive in smaller numbers and at some point will begin to repopulate upon the earth. But I am not going to tell you a false statement. It does not look good at the moment. It is important that we change now that we begin to do what we can in a small way that we can. Yeah. What can I do to help the land around me? What can I do to help the world? Many of you are acting as if someone will come in and save you. Yeah. This will not happen. We are here to save ourselves. And it is through each person's awareness and actions that the world will become a better and cleaner place. I don't worry about Gaia. I mean, we'll just go extinct and she will re recover on her own. So that's what my feeling is anyway. She will recover, yes. But how bad do you want it to get? No, I don't want it to get bad. All right, uh, next question. In America, where will be the most environmentally comfortable place to live in the next decade or two? Unfortunately, most places will be touched by the changes at hand. Yeah. I do not, in my abilities as of right now, I am not able to predict a, quote, safe zone. Okay. Um, he is showing me, um, uh, that said, he is showing me some places. Idaho looks pretty good. Um, the middle of the country, although the farmland, the farmland is going to have some challenges, but the middle of the country is generally a little bit uh, better off. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say in 100 years, what will be the percentage in America of total land coverage of natural reserves in 100 years, say? It is difficult to answer that question with certainty because it, because it is based on human awareness and the probabilities of energies. Yeah. What he will say, though, is... And Eric, you can chime in, too, if you want. Mm, he's He's strong right now. He's talking. He's saying that... Within a hundred years, you will see geographical changes and political changes in the United States. Um, he's talking about a new uh, government or governing bot. He calls it a governing body, actually. It's like a council. It's okay. like, it looks like a council of, of beings, uh, humans, and they're more like a governing body of the United States. And I'm not even sure it's called the United States, to be honest with you. It doesn't look okay. like it. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, and they will help protect the natural reserves? Is that what their purpose is? It will. Um, this governing body will be the law of the land in what you call the United States and what I call the United States. There will be many new laws enacted to protect and honor the land Good. Um, he's showing me bees right now uh, bees and beekeepers um, honey this is very important and it looks like um 2042 um through 2042 to about 2052 there's going to be a lot of regeneration of the so. land, but also bees. Bees, yeah, I worry very... about the the whole depopulation of bees. You know, that's what pollinates our crops and all that stuff. It would be sheer famine if the bee population was completely destroyed. 
disastrous yes yeah that's not no, but there's exactly. going to be a lot more people he's showing me go back to beekeeping mm -hmm. um and also um regeneration of the soil and crops is, is going to be but we can start now that's the point he's trying to make to me okay. this morning yeah. too is like we've got to start now in the ways that we can this is nobody's going to save us here no you know? no so what do you think about you know the there's efforts on the basis of people who are wanting to protect the environment but the road to hell is paved with good intentions and so you have these wind turbines out in the uh in the ocean that have i think caused disorientation in whales and they beach and they die but also the windmills on the land they're killing bats you know and birds and things like that and so do you think we're just not doing the right things to protect mother earth and and conserve energy i think we should just figure out zero point energy that would be the easiest but he agrees with the zero point energy um to respond to your question he says there will be new ways and technologies to protect bats and marine life. Good. Um, yes. Okay. How many other planets in our universe have conscious life and societies like we do? I find this a difficult question to answer as I am not aware of every other planet in the universe. Eric, you can also chime in. Hmm. Eric is saying you can't count them all up in this moment. I mean, well, how many digits? A three digit number, a two digit number, one digit saying number? Four. Four digit. Wow. Okay. That's good enough. Mm -hmm. When will humans stop abusing and killing animals for sport? Hmm. When will humans stop abusing and killing themselves and other humans as animals for sport? Is this response? Killing. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, he's going to respond to that. Okay. Um, he says, humans by and large misunderstand the relationship they have with animals and therein misunderstand the relationship they have with each other. When we kill animals for sport, and he's not talking about, actually, he's not talking about like, um, like if you were to hunt an animal and then but you it. honor it and then you eat it and you use you use it and it kind of feels like a, to call the herd to stop disease yes yeah yes he's not talking about that he's just talking okay. about that for personal gain or um, like your ego he's saying yeah. um, he says that it's humans need to understand that there is no purpose to this no benefit ask yourself if you are going to kill what is the benefit do i need to eat do i need to feed others what is the benefit for others if it is only if it is simply for your own personal gratification it is important that you question yourself and your motives at this time of course last question then we'll stop and we'll restart for part two uh, mm -hmm. Any messages, and Eric, you might be able to help with this, any messages from animal consciousness about this abuse and killing of animals for sport? Um, Eric's going to answer this one. He says he's going to answer from animal con consciousness. He said, Eric says that, <laughs> this is interesting. He says the animals are tired of us. <laughs> Oh, sorry, God. I'm not laughing. Part of us too, man. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, sorry, it made me laugh. Yeah, that's the funny. animals are, he's saying the animals are tired of us. They they want us to wake up and start acting more mature, is the word okay. he says, mature. Yeah. Okay, interesting. All right, well, we'll stop there. You guys remember the description box has the link that you need to click on to check her out and don't forget about 11 11 i will she's going to give me something to plug to put on social my social media as well and uh, all right you. hit the notification bell and subscribe to this channel and the atlantis scalar channel bye thank you john muir and also courtney and eric thank and you. Tune. we're going to start it again okay